I'm going to go ahead and click record. All right, so let's go ahead and share a screen. All right, so everyone can see my command screen there. All right. All right, so we're going to spend 99% of our time today in the opportunities section. All right, so remember that in order to get to DocuSign, right, in order to get to DocuSign, you have to go through the opportunities section. Now, before we even do that, I want to point out a resource here. So hopefully, I know most of you are that are on this call. I see a couple names. I'm not sure exactly who those are. But just so everyone knows, I would like everyone to go and ask to join, if you're on Facebook, join my page, the KW Alliance Technology Mastermind page. Now, there's a particular reason I'm going here, which is in the files section of my Facebook page, in the files section, the very first file here is a DocuSign form, PDF, right? It's the second one down now, I think, because it looks like Michelle uploaded something into the files yesterday, right? So it's the second one now. It says DocuSign 101 Notes, okay? And if you click on that, it's going to open a PDF that has been created that'll give you some of the basics of what you're trying to accomplish, right? So if you leave the call today and you're like, I'm completely lost, just remember that this document is here. All right, so how to add a field into a PDF, and it kind of gives you step-by-step -step instructions. Now, the important part I want to point out is, it says you will need to make sure your DocuSign account is connected to command first. Click here for steps, and that's a video. Now, the reason that's important is, the first thing we're going to do on command is go to settings, and you have to make sure that you have created your command DocuSign account, and that it's connected. When I come into my applications, it's right here underneath of connected apps. It says DocuSign. The reason is I can't disconnect because I can't go all the way through the setup process. So if you have not done this, please watch this video right here on this document and it'll take you through click for click on connecting that account. Now Arturo already knows this, but I'll say it because we have a couple people on here. When you create this DocuSign account in command, if you have an existing DocuSign account, if you already use DocuSign, you cannot sign up with the same email address. It's gotta be a different email address. Okay, so you just go through that process and then once you're connected, it just says here connected current status um, and then you're good to go. The other note is it does not need to be your at kw.com email. So if Kyle Holland at kw.com is my paid DocuSign subscription that I've been using for the past three years, I could sign up here with Kyle Hollerin at gmail.com if I chose. Okay. So that's step one is connecting your DocuSign. Quick, quick question about that. Yes. Um, if you do that, um, obviously this, this email doesn't have to say, it, it, is, is there a problem later on when you submit the paperwork to the office and it's not that this email is not the same as your login with no, KW? Nothing, nothing has no, no relation. Okay. Thank okay. You. Good question. It's a good question. Um, all right. So DocuSign says in progress. Is that what you said here, Inez? So if, if you're seeing in progress, again, watch that video because they go through a couple of the, uh, the troubleshooting things. A lot of times, like the third step of this connection is they send a, an email that you've got to click on, right? That verifies your account and then brings you back over here to do something else. So a lot of times when it says in progress, it's that the email wasn't authorized properly. So watch that video because there's a way to resend that email and get out of that in progress stage. You should be able to get to connected within five minutes. There shouldn't be like a time period in which we're sitting here in limbo. And again, I, I can't show you because I've already connected. So that's why I'm just going to point everybody here. If you watch this video, it's perfect. It's good. Just go step by step. All right. Okay. All right. So we're going to leave that there. Now, what I'm going to do is we're going to go over here and go to the opportunity section. Okay. Which are the two little hands shaking over here on the left-hand side. And just remember, you can click on KW. It'll punch out all the different names of your, your, uh, your, your applets until you get to know them. All right, so we're going to go to opportunities. Everybody good? All right, so 
I'm going to give you, because this is kind of opportunities and DocuSign together, I'm going to give you a 30,000 foot view of opportunities. So instead of trying to follow these steps here, I'm just going to kind of do a demonstration real quick. The goal here is, is that when you're talking to somebody, uh, let's kind of create this here. When do I create an opportunity? At what point do I do that? So you would create an opportunity when there's some sort of substantial conversation that you might be able to work with this person and make money. Okay. The reason I say it that way is because not every single lead is going to become an opportunity, right? If I get in 10 Facebook leads, I'm not creating 10 opportunities, but if I call those 10 people and have two really good conversations and they both say that they might work with me, I'm going to create two opportunities. Does everyone kind of understand the difference between that? That's a common question. All right. So let's say, um, let's see, I might have Frank in here. So let's say I meet Frank at an open house and Frank wants me to potentially sell his house sometime later this year. So I'm gonna create an opportunity. We're gonna come back and I'll show you how that works. Well, let's just go ahead and do it. So I'm gonna create an opportunity. That's your first step. And I'm gonna say, this is gonna be in, my, in the Fairfax Gateway Market Center. So if you're only in one market center, it'll default to that market center. But someone like Arturo potentially, right, where you're in two market centers, you're gonna select which market center that this opportunity is, is, is for because when you submit compliance, it's gonna to go to that market center's MCA, okay? So make sure you select that properly. If you're on a team, make sure you select your team name. And that way you can share that opportunity with your team members so they can see where the deal is in the pipeline and that you can create tasks and assign them to people, okay? If you go in here and you create an opportunity and you don't select your team, if you're a team lead, then you don't see any of those team features. The second important step here is what kind of opportunity is it? Is it a listing, a buyer, or a landlord or tenant? And this is important because when you select this, the compliance checklist rides along with it. So if I select listing here, it's gonna require you to turn in a listing agreement. Well, if you accidentally did that and it was supposed to be a buyer, you're gonna run into a difficulty, right? And you've gotta just delete it and start a new one. So again, I said Frank was gonna be a listing, so I'll click on that. And then the prerequisite to this is the person needs to be a contact in your database. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type in Frank and I type in Frank Vincent and I found Frank. There he is. I click his name. All right. So the person needs to be in order to create an opportunity. The contact needs to be in your database first. Right below it says opportunity name, Frank Vincent listing. I can come down here and then the only other required field is what do I think the commission is gonna be on this property potentially, right? If I had the opportunity to work with Frank, what, what, how much money could I potentially make? The reason I say that is, and the reason they ask for this is because it's a, it's a revenue projection tool. Okay, so I would ask Frank, or I know what neighborhood Frank lives in. I look him up in tax records and I decide that, you know, Frank's house might be worth $550,000, right? It's an estimate. This is, not, this is not a real number yet. And then I'm simply going to go here and say, all right, my commission, you know, I charge on average, let's say I know my average commission is two and a half percent, right? So I type in 2.5. And then here, right, and we'll show this to you in just a second, there are different stages to this pipeline. So in my cultivate stage, I've got, all right, is this listing going to be in the next zero to six months, six to 12, or 2021? And this is customizable. So I created these different, uh, these different boards here. So I said he wanted to sell sometime this year. So I'm going to click on zero to six months and I'll do create. Okay. And that creates an opportunity for me. And once I create that opportunity, I get this screen right here, which is called the opportunity details page. Okay. Any questions on just creating that opportunity up until this point? Yeah. Um, Kyle, how did you uh, get the zero to six months or 2021 tags? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back to this pipeline. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to go back to the main screen here and to show you, Frank, right. We have these three different pipelines. I've got listing buyers, leases, I've got potential income. So it's reading all of the potential deals I have and telling me, okay, if all of these closed, how much money could I make? What's my potential income? All right. Yeah. Now, Five stages. So these are actually called phases. So cultivate, appointment, active, under contract, and closed. These are my five phases. I cannot edit any of these five stages. That's what they're called. However, 
I can zoom in to these sections. So I can zoom in to cultivate. And when KW provided this product to everybody, the default uh, board names, right, right were see. watch, nurture, and hot. Okay. Yeah. And so what I did was I went up here to edit stages and I was able to change the names, right? So originally they say watch, nurture, hot. I clicked the little edit button right here and I changed mine to say 2021, six to 12, zero to six months. Okay. Then it gives me this desired effect. So if I have listings and I'm talking to people and I talk to a client named Stephanie Rowley and she tells me she might sell next year, I can add her into cultivate and put her in the 2021 section. And then I can move her up, right? And so this is a cool part about opportunities. Once you create one of these opportunities, you can click on the opportunity and drag and drop that opportunity through this pipeline, All right? So Stephanie calls me and says, hey, actually I wanna sell later this year. I can simply drag and drop that tile and move her up to the next six to 12 months. So remember, I created Frank Vincent, I created that opportunity and I said, hey, put it in zero to six months. So that's why it shows up here automatically. Okay, so that's where the names came from when I created that opportunity. All good there? All good. All right, so let's say Frank calls me and he says, you know what, Kyle, let's go ahead and schedule an appointment. I see that it's a seller's market and I wanna get this house in the market, it's ready to go. So I can move Frank, again, I can click on his card here. I can move Frank up into appointment, right? So I'm gonna actually drag and drop him up here into the next phase of the pipeline. So I drop them in, and now when I click on appointment, I see I've got two boards under appointment, scheduled appointments and no signed agency appointment follow-up. All right, so now I've got a nice list of all of my appointments that I've got coming. What's the percent under scheduled appointments? It says 5%. All right, so if you go back- Was that the thing that Deb did yesterday? I'm not sure what Deb did yesterday. So what, what that is showing is, you know how I put in um, that your house is worth $550,000, right? And I put in, I'm going to make 3% commission. So it said probable income. And so basically it's saying, all right, we're going to give you 5% of that commission right now as probable income. As you move it further down the pipeline, that percentage goes up, meaning I'm closer and closer to actually making that money. <clears throat> Now, the other part of opportunities here, guys, which is a huge opportunity, no pun intended, that I don't see a lot of people taking advantage of. We did a kind of an individual class on this last week. You can search for checklist and you'll find it, which is on each one of these boards, you can put a little checklist in there of things that need to happen when someone is at that stage of, this, of the process. So in this case, I've got scheduled appointment and I've gone in and I've created four checklist items that need to happen. I need to send a pre-listing packet. I need to send a welcome email. Oh, I need to pull current comps. All right, well, let me set a due date of that being due tomorrow. Go ahead, Arturo. Yes. Good, how are you? Arturo's on the phone, not listening to us. No, I'm joking. All right, so this is how I, I went in. And there's a, again, there's a video here, but let me show you, right? Um, if we have an upcoming appointment, if I want to add checklist items to this board under appointment, I'm going to come here, I'll click on edit stages. And then right here in the middle, right, this is where we were able to change the name and edit the names of the board. Right here in the middle, it says checklist, zero, four items. And this is where I can come in and add my generic checklist for each one of my deals. All right, so if there's something else I need to do here, let's say um, send COVID addendum. Let's just say it's something you want to do when you send over everything. So in case you have any questions about it, I can click save. And now every time someone comes into this section under schedule appointment, they'll have five checklist items that are due. All right. So if I move this person out and move them back in, we should see it now says, um, well, it'll, it'll load in. It says two or four right now, but it'll add a fifth. Okay. Now remember also that every deal is different. Okay, so if I go ahead and move in, let me move, um, let's move Frank. So let's keep moving. I'll show it this way. So now Frank and I meet, uh, we sign paperwork. I move Frank over here to active. All right, so on this one, Frank's got 11 checklist items. So as soon as we go active and we're pre-listing, I've got 11 checklist items. Let me make sure I drop off a lockbox and I make sure I call a sign company. And then remember, these are my five, my 11 generic ones for this board. 
but let's say for Frank's property, we need to get a well inspection. So I can come into each opportunity and add an item and say, uh, schedule well inspection, right? And I will click on save. Scroll down a little bit here. Sorry, I'm gonna move my control board. Try that again. Add item, schedule well, enter. and save and now hit close and now Frank's got an extra checklist item here so you can add different checklist items for your opportunity to make it personalized okay so we need a whole class on this I don't want to get too deep in these details but anyone that hasn't seen it yet any questions about just opportunities and how you can work the opportunity section all right so let's go ahead and jump into DocuSign so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go find Frank's card now remember that when we created the opportunity, we came to the opportunity details page. And I said, okay, that's where you land. To get back there, after you create an opportunity for the first time, you're gonna find the opportunity in the pipeline and you're gonna click on the name of the opportunity. Right, so in this case, I'm gonna click on Frank Vincent listing. And it's gonna load up this opportunity details page. All right. Now, on this page, it says details, seller profile, documents, offers, commissions, notes, and timeline. And we're gonna start working our way down these different tabs. So under details is where it says Frank, right? It's all the information I typed in when we had created the opportunity. Notice there's a little pencil up here. So you can edit if you want to. You can edit any of those details and change any of those details. Now, one thing I wanna point out is over here, there's also a seller worksheet section under details. And this is where I can go in and actually put in some of the financial details about the, uh, the transaction so that I can use it on a seller net sheet. So let's say we're gonna pay the buyer's agent 2.5% and I tell Frank, hey, closing costs are typically about 1%, right? Now, Frank, how much do you owe on your imaginary $550,000 house? 200,000. All right, so Frank owes $200,000, that's his mortgage balance. Frank, do you have a second mortgage at all? No. All right, and then I could go in and do some proration of taxes and, and uh, HOA dues, I'm not gonna do that right now. But the last thing down here, it says show net on offer comparison. So if I wanna use this number in a net sheet, I can go ahead and toggle this on and click save. Now, the general idea behind this is, is now you've got a, a, a singular place to come to, you've got all the listing details, I've got all the mortgage information on one page, right? So it's just kind of an easy place to come and look at all the details of the transaction. Also notice there is a description field down here. So anything that's missing that you might wanna put on this page, you can easily come in here and do a description and say HOA contact, right? Lisa Williams, 703-44, whatever the number is, right? Hit save. And then that information is also saved right here on the detail screen. All right, so that's the details tab. Any questions there? All right, now I'm gonna jump down here actually. We're gonna go to the far right. Timeline is the same thing as history in dot loop. So if I click on this timeline tab right here, it'll just show me, hey, this is when the opportunity was created. Here's when someone did something. So you can see it's showing me that the opportunity was created at 115, right, 10 minutes ago. And then every time I moved it or checked off items, it's telling me when I did that. So if you need to go back and figure out timing, or if you're on a team, this is where you can see like who changed the opportunity or who moved it. It'll show you that information. Here's some notes. Okay, so notes are on the opportunity. So note title might be uh, appraisal uh, information. Talked with appraiser and they are only doing exterior appraisals I'm spelling that wrong right during COVID so it's just a way that you can kind of not create notes around a contact per se so I could leave a note around Frank Vincent but also I can leave a note here just about the deal and it'll time stamp it right so it'll give you that time stamp of when that note was created and you've got a nice Rolodex of all the notes if you ever need to go back and reflect on all those things now Rick Cockrell if he was on here 
He would tell us all that if our deal was going south and we started, you know, having issues with the agent, that you could easily come here and use this note section and, and put in, you know, what's been happening with the clients and with that broker. Um, so we have a nice Rolodex of what's going on there. Okay, so that's the notes tab. All good there? All right, so seller profile. So let's go back over to details and we'll keep working this way. Seller profile, what that is, is who has downloaded the app and has seen the guide section. Anybody seen the guide inside of the, the mobile app? Yeah. All right, Frank, so what's the guide inside the mobile app? The guide is either listing or selling or a buyer or list uh, seller mm -hmm. and it has all these different steps in it. Okay. So, so you guys, uh, says, you know, loan officer, for instance. All right. So the guide is in there and you guys can edit that guide in command, right? You edit it down here in the consumer tab and you're basically giving your consumer, this is step one to the process. Step two, step three, step four, step five, right? Talk to a lender, go see properties, write a contract, get a home inspection. So if, Frank Vincent had my app downloaded right here underneath the guide section is where I could check off right where we are in the process. So that when Frank opens up his mobile app, he would see that he would see check marks on the first four and he would know that we're on step five. It's the Domino's pizza tracker. If you guys remember that from when we were training it a couple, couple months ago. All right. So that's what you're going to see here under seller profile. Now the important tab, for everybody and the one you guys all want to get to is the next one, which is documents. Okay. So we'll go ahead and click on documents there. Perfect. So Inez says she found her buyer doc. So that's good. All right. So on documents here, right? That's the next tab over. You're going to see a couple different things. The first is this was a listing opportunity. Everybody remembers that. So because of that, we see listed, under contract and closed. So just like in dot loop right now, when you open up uh, you know, a loop, it breaks it up, right? And it says agency paperwork and then contract paperwork. It's the same thing right here, right? Listed paperwork and then under contract. So I'm on listed. I know that because I've got this little blue line to the left here. And this in the middle is the new compliance checklist. So uh, Manassas, if you're on the call, we have a couple people from Manassas, you guys are already using this, all right? For all the other Alliance Group offices, um, we're not here yet. So this is where we are going to, right? And so this is the way it works. We have listed over here. We have under contract. This is your under contract checklist. And then we have closed. All right. So what you're going to do is you will see in the top right corner under documents, if you have DocuSign connected, you're going to see where it says start a transaction. Okay. Now I have also connected dot loop. So I want to keep, I want everyone here to remember that DocuSign will eventually become the preferred free version that is as part of your cap. Um, you would have the ability if you wanted to, to pay for your own dot loop account. Okay. And connect that dot loop account to command to upload for compliance and getting paid. So DocuSign and dot loop, all they're used for now moving forward is going to be for e-signature, right? We still use it for compliance and that's where the, that's where the change happens. So start a transaction. I'm going to click on DocuSign. Okay, so in DocuSign, what we used to call loops in dot loop in DocuSign is called rooms. So when I signed up for DocuSign, it asked me to, you know, create a, an email, right, my login. So I'm going to type in my login. And then I created a password. This was all part of that first setup process that we did. And so now what's happening is command and DocuSign are talking to one another. And we just created a room. So again, this is the same language almost as a loop, all right? So I come in here and you will see as soon as I get into DocuSign, it already says Frank Vincent listing. All right, so it's already tied to that opportunity. Now it defaults to this documents tab right here. Okay, it defaults to this documents tab. I want you to go to the details tab first though. So when you click on details, we should see some different things here. So the first is um, that, right? If we had any information that came over in here, we would have that information here. We can also go up here and edit. All right, so I can come up here and I can edit and I can say seller one, 
Frank Vincent. And I can type in your email address, right? So I'll do uh, frankv at kw.com, right? I could type in the property address. So this is just like the autofill form on Top Loop. All right, so I come in here and say Frank's house is 404 Dale Road, right? And you can come through and put in all this information. If you scroll down this way, you'll see listing agent one. So that's where I come in here and type in my information. Okay. Now the nice thing about it is once you type it in, at least on my computer, it's saved. So I just type it in, I just hit my first initial and it'll fill in all my different boxes there. All right, so step one is coming here to the details section. And once you fill that out, then you're gonna click on save. All right, so this room has been updated. Now we're gonna go back to the documents tab here. And in this documents tab, right now there are no documents in this room. So that's our next step, right? We need to go get our documents. So to do that, you're gonna see right here, there's an add button. So you can go ahead and click on add. And this is where you can click on DocuSign forms. Now Arturo, uh, you had asked this question, so I'll just address this here. This says add, and I can add something from my computer, right? So if someone sent you a PDF or you had to upload one of those documents, maybe right now in the short term until we get that library in, you can upload a document from your computer, upload a PDF, right? Drop a signature line on there and send it out for signature. We're going to click on DocuSign Forms, right? And, and you might get a box here that pops up that's asking you for your NAID number right? Your realtor number. The reason they're asking for that is because as an example, it's the same way in dot loop. There's no change here. If I am not a member of MAR, I cannot use their forms. Just like if I'm not a member of NBAR, I cannot use their forms. So if you put in your NAID number or your NRDS number, sorry, your nerds number, then it'll allow you to select all of the form libraries that you're allowed to access. All right. Now, it says DocuSign Forms Library right here. For all of the Alliance Group Market Centers, uh, in a couple weeks, whenever we go to this is when we're going to launch this because it's just the forms changing. So it's really it's it's hard to put these groups together. You guys will have the ability on this first drop down to click on Forms Groups, and then down here you would have NVAR Listing Agency Residential, right? You would have a bunch of them, and this would be your listing agreement, your disclosures, all of them would be in one packet. So you don't have to go looking for them all um, individually. So we're trying to put that together the same way that we have it in dot loop right now. Now, the way we're gonna progress today through this call is in the drop down, I'm gonna click on DocuSign Forms Library. And when I click that drop down, underneath this account I'm logged into, I'm seeing all of my office disclosures. So if you're only a member of one office, you're only gonna see your market center number and that's like your Palladian and your McLean, right? Your joint venture disclosures are in there. And then we've got NBAR library here. Um, this might only really apply to Inez. We've got rain in here for Hampton Roads in case you're doing anything down that way. For all the Northern Neck agents, we have VAR, okay? And then we have MAR and GCAR will also be here by Friday. All right, so that's how you get to your forms libraries. Make sense? So I'm gonna click on NVAR, just like in dot loop here, guys, right? They pop up, uh, NVAR and DocuSign have an agreement. And so they will update the forms for us. So there won't be any sort of delay whenever NVAR gives those forms to DocuSign, they'll upload the new versions. But in here, what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna type in listing agreement, All right? I'm gonna select it and I can do more than one. So I can do listing agreement, I can do lead paint disclosure, I can do property disclosure. This is where you guys are selecting the documents that you need to send out for signature. So let me say I'm going to add those three. It might be some, it might be more, depending on what, what kind of agency you're doing. So three forms, and I'm going to go over here and click on add. Now, once I do that, all of those documents are now going to come into this, this documents tab. Okay, so we'll see them all come in. There they are. Hey, Cal. Yes, sir. Uh, that's where my question comes in is, you know, are you going to break those down into different um, uh, uh, folders like you did in dot loop or 
none. Oh, can we do it? So you guys can't do it right now. All right, you, you guys, like the way that this is set up is they don't have the ability for you guys to set up your own independent templates, okay? okay. What you will be able to do though is like in dot loop, instead of clicking on DocuSign Forms Library, you'll click on Group, and then in this drop down it'll say Virginia Listing, Virginia Buyer, right? And it'll be all the forms will already be there for you. You will not have to select all the different forms. Yeah, but if you remember, you know, in that loop right now, if you're doing, you know, a buyer agency, you have a buyer agency, you know, kind of a folder right. in there for you. This will, so the folder is called a group here in DocuSign. Okay. So we will have that. Yes, yeah, so it'll be exactly the same. The buyer agency folder will just be called Virginia Buyer Agency Group. And you'll okay. click that and that'll be all of your forms that need to be filled out. But will it show up as a separate folder? Not not from the selection, but what's behind there? Or no, are all of your forms going in the same room? Nope, they're all in the same room. So it's just like in a loop, right? I come in there and I've now got five line items. I've got five different documents. So this is just the same view. These are my five documents that are gonna be. So again, guys, if these three documents were in a group and I just select the group, by the time we get here, it would look exactly like this. It just prevents you from having to go in and select them one by one and create your own your own folder. Right, but I don't know if everybody else was doing this, but I would organize a couple different folders: the the um, the agreement with me, the uh, buyers for at this point, right, as a folder like where you've got room docs, and yep. then con you know a contract folder. Yep, yep. So okay, so you could do that, Michelle. So okay. we're, we're in the room, right? So we're in one room and we've got what they're calling here room docs. Okay, that's over here. This actions button allows you to add a folder to the room. There you go. All right, so I could do, um, I could do um, uh, property inspection. Yeah. Right, and put it in somewhere like this where I'm just kind of organized and I do create and now I've got two folders, right? So now I've got a property inspection folder and a room docs folder and I can upload docs into this one here. Yeah. Okay, and if this doesn't fit here, um, you can add it wherever it fits in your discussion. So I know you're doing a listing example. Mm -hmm. So for buyers right now, uh, it's not uncommon to, to lose a deal and have multiple contracts. Mm -hmm. So that got messy with dot loop, like where you were putting the information about who the buyer seller um, information would be. Yeah. Uh, dot loop didn't handle that very well uh -huh. um, for the ads. You know, I would just take the contract that we lost and move it off into a different folder, but I kept it in the same loop. Correct. So should we keep it in the same room? Yep. Okay. Yep. So you have one room to one opportunity. You cannot create multiple rooms off of one opportunity. But okay, you so can have multiple contracts. Yeah. So again, so here, let's say I wanted to, I could go ahead and just, you know, put my my docs in here for my deal. And then if it if it fell through, right, then I come back over here and do actions, add a new folder, and then call it, you know, new right. contract. Right. And hit create. And now I'm gonna put all my new contracts, all my new ones in there. Right. And I could rename this and call it, you know, old contract. Okay. Okay. All right, so that's how you can add those folders. There's an action button over here. I'm gonna go over here and hit delete. So I'm gonna click on delete. Now, the next step guys is, right? So we created the opportunity, created the room, we've added the documents. Now you're gonna go in and this is where DocuSign has already templated all of the forms in terms of everything is editable. Okay, so you're not having to drop in text boxes and those, those types of things. So I will go into exclusive agency listing agreement. Right, and then when I come in here, it's gonna to start to autofill from that details page, these documents, okay? So I've got Frank Vincent in there, all right? And then I've got up here, so what's the date? So I can go ahead and click on that and type in, you know, 0429. Now remember, all of these fields basically were in that details section. So the more I fill out in that details section, the less I have to do here. Because I didn't fill out all those boxes, now I'm coming in and I'm typing in, you know, firm name, Keller Williams, Fairfax Gateway, right? And so you guys, just like in dot loop, you're going through this document here and typing in all the pertinent details that need to be in this in this listing agreement. Okay, so that's the first step is just typing it in. Now again, I've gone over these a bunch of times. 
all of these should be working now. So they've got radio buttons on all these things, right? So all these are just click yes, there's one clothes dryer, right? And you're just going through and filling this out. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click save and close once I go through that whole thing and, and fill out all my different details. Someone asked this question, so I'm just gonna address it. What you can't do right now is, you can't take the listing agreement and automatically put in like 60 days and have that show up every single time. Right, you have to type in that, that information. You can't temple them in that way. All right, so let's say then I went in and I, I went in and I added all my information, typed in my offer, right, or typed up my listing agency agreement. The next step now is to send out for signatures, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna check the ones that you want signatures on, right? So I'm gonna check this one here. You don't need to send all of them, but you're gonna check the ones that you want for signature. I'll check this one maybe, the lead-based paint. When I check them, you'll notice we get a new toolbar up here. And this one right in the middle, this little logo in the middle says DocuSign. That's the one that we're looking for. So I can click on DocuSign. And in DocuSign, what they do is they, you basically put the forms that you want to send out for signature in what they call an envelope and you send out the envelope. Right? So that's what we're doing here. So we're preparing a letter. Right? Think of it that way. So what's the name of the envelope? So I'm going to do listing agreement i'll change the name of that so it doesn't get confusing so listing agreement uh vincent All right and then i come down here it says add documents to the envelope so this is where it's it's showing me right here's my agency agreement here's my lead-based paint disclosure these are the two i just selected that's why they're here i could also go back in and pull in more so if i notice that i forgot a document that needs to be sent out for signature i can click on room docs and go back in and grab that Right. And then the last thing here is it says add recipients to the envelope. So who are we sending this to? So what you're going to do is when you're using the forms that come from the forms library, you're going to click on pre-tagged roles because DocuSign has already labeled all the initial boxes, all the signature boxes so that you don't have to drop them in there. So I'm going to say pre-tagged roles. And then this pops up. Okay. And although it seems a little bit confusing, you just have to look at it a little bit. So, so basically what you're going to see is you have each form that we have uploaded and then all the potential places where someone could be a signer or a signature. So basically seller one, I'm going to check that box, right? Because seller one on the listing agreement is going to be Frank Vincent, right? And there he is right there. So I'm just basically now lining up to make sure the right person is signing in the right spot. So I'll call seller one is Frank Vincent. We don't have a seller two a seller three or a seller four. So I don't need to worry about those. The listing broker, right? In this case, I can hit, click it and it's me, right? So I'm gonna click on Kyle Holler and do the listing broker. We have no purchasers, right? The lead-based paint disclosure, remember it has a spot for both the buyers and the sellers to initial. So we don't need to worry about the purchaser. We're just gonna say selling associate. Um, where's the lead-based? All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and click add selected. Okay. Now this is also a little bit different for DocuSign. So in DocuSign, you basically have, you can order who gets the documents, right? So Frank's gonna get them first, and then once Frank signs them, I can then get them second, right? So instead of getting them at the same time, I don't have to sign it until Frank has signed it. Here's another uh, little tip here as well. If you have a, um, if you have a virtual assistant or somebody that's helping you with your business, if you want to, you can do add recipient here and do um, email address, and you can actually add somebody. So I could say I'm going to add uh, Elise Cooper, my wife. Let's say she was my admin. I could add her, and basically all I'm going to do is say receives a copy. And what that allows me to do is is that once someone signs, let's say Frank signs it and then I sign it, then my admin will get an email with a copy of that signed agreement for their records. So that they can upload it to the title company and upload it to wherever it needs to go to. All right, so that's, a, that's an option there as well. And then down at the bottom here, message to all recipients, please DocuSign. Frank, please sign these documents for me. If you have any questions, let me know. Then I come down here and I can click on next. 
a follower if there's a valid email. Right, so I do next. And then all this screen is, is you confirming that everything looks good to be sent out for signature, right? That all the signature boxes are in the right spot. We'll let this load up. And you can see here it says documents. So this is how I can toggle between the different, the different uh, documents that I've uploaded over here, right? So it says exclusive agency listing agreement. Now up here, you see where it says Frank Vincent. So I'm basically viewing this document like I'm Frank. So on here, it's gonna show you, make sure all of your, uh, everything you typed in is in there. And then here, right, it's showing you that's where Frank would sign an initial. So you're just confirming that it's in the right spot. Same thing, make sure all these checks are done properly. There's all my little check buttons, right? I had the one closed dryer, all right? And then once you do this a few times, you're gonna notice that you can rely on DocuSign that they've put the initial boxes in the right spot, okay? But let's say you change something. I just wanna show this to you. Just like in dot loop, if you needed to get an extra signature down here under least items, right? You could actually go over here and you can click on, you have these standard fields here for Frank, right? And I can say, hey, I need an initial. And I can click on initial and drop right here. And it'll be an additional spot that Frank needs to initial. Right, and I can also do signature. So I'll just show that to you here too. So if I need him to sign here for whatever reason, I know you wouldn't, but if you did, you can drop that little sign button. Okay, so as long as everything looks good, now I can toggle between colors, right? So if I need the broker initial or something on it, I would select the broker's name first and then drop my initial in, right? And that'll ask for the broker initial. You'll see that the color code matches. All right, so you're just confirming all this looks good. And then you can go ahead and hit out uh, recipient preview. So if you wanted to see what it would look like when it got to Frank, you could click that and take a look or you can go ahead and send out four signatures. So this just takes a little bit of practice, guys. I know it's a little bit of a different system than we were using in dot loop, but my suggestion is create an opportunity, right? And then send yourself, like to your other email address, send yourself documents. So you can see the way it comes through, the way the consumer signs everything, um, and you get a better handle on some of this back and forth if you actually do a little trial in there. All right, any questions on kind of prepping those documents and then sending them out for signature within DocuSign? Uh, Tinez, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Do, I, I know we have to upload them into the system um, using DocuSign, but can, if we use AuthentiSign, will we still be able to use AuthentiSign and just upload the documents as PDF? I can't Sorry, hear Nez. you. Sorry, Nez, yes, you absolutely can. Okay. okay, you guys just realized you guys have the ability to use any e-signature platform that you want. That has nothing to do with, uh, with what we're going towards now. So if you want to use AuthentiSign, perfect. If you want to use .loop, great. If you want to use DocuSign, go ahead and do it, right? The ultimate goal is, let's come back here now. So let's come back to commands. Let's say my client signed that listing agreement. The next step is I have to upload that for compliance. Right, so I have a couple options here, and this is going to answer Inez's question. Um, so right here, right, this is my compliance checklist, and so I now, now I need to turn this in. It's saying, all right, I need to attach my listing agreement. The benefit of using DocuSign is if you click Add a File right here to the right, right. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to click Add a File. If I click on DocuSign, it's going to show me all of the documents that are in that room. I don't need to upload anything right, the room and the opportunity you're talking to one another. So I can say, oh, this is the listing agency agreement and hit assign, right? And now it assigns it to that line. Annette, let's say you wrote your contract on AuthentiSign and you've got a copy of that um, on your computer, right? You can go in and say, add a file and I need to manually upload that file from my computer, right? So you can download it to your computer and then hit drag and drop and upload it here. That's what I did with the documents that I couldn't find until just a short while ago. Gotcha. So that's what you had done is uploaded them here. Correct. Okay. Yep. So, um, so that's what you're going to do, right? You'll see these compliance checklists. Some of them are required, right? So tax record MLS listing. So again, I'll show that to you. Let me say I go into manual and do a, a browse and I can just find a PDF here. 
Yep, so this is the Virginia Realtor sight on scene document. Try to upload that, I click assign, and then you'll notice it's, it's uploaded to the line item, okay? Now, once all of my required documents have been attached, I can then click submit to Market Center. This is actually a new update that they did as well a couple months ago, which was you can also go in here to attach multiple files. So if I didn't want to do them one by one, I can click on attach multiple files, click on DocuSign, and then go down and go, here's my property disclosure, right? Here's, and you can just actually quickly go boom, 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 hit attach, and then they're all attached here to the compliance checklist. Right, and then I do submit to Market Center, and then that way, that's when the compliance broker would get the notification that they've got a, um, a, a listing they need to go review, right? And either, either approve or reject. Okay, so that's the process of, of that. Now, let's say we move forward. So to, uh, let me go back and answer Michelle's question because that's what Michelle was asking for here. So Michelle, remember that, let's use a, a buyer as an example, all right? So I know we're looking at a listing opportunity, but imagine this was buyer agency paperwork, right? That's not gonna change. So even if the buyer wrote an offer and then they, they voided that offer, buyer agency is still accepted and good to go, right? So now what's going to happen is under the under contract section, this is where you would have uploaded the original purchase contract, the finance and addendum and all those things here. So let's say it falls apart. This, all, this contract does. What you're going to do is up top here, it says under contract and you can click this and you can say add a version, right? And I can now call this a uh, new contract, right? And hit create a new version and it'll actually move right? It'll move that original folder down under here under custom folders. And all of this gets cleared out. So you can upload a new purchase agreement, a new financial disclosure, right on the offer number two that you're submitting. And then you can go back up here and click resubmit to market center. Okay. So that's how you do that. All right. Last couple things here, guys, we got seven minutes left and I just want to kind of finish this up. There's a really good hour long video on my Facebook page, if you just type in DocuSign, there's a really good recording on there about using DocuSign at a high level. If you guys wanted to dig in a little bit deeper, I encourage you to go check that out. So the last two steps here with the new process. All right, I've got to go to offers. And so on Frank's, Frank's, um, Frank's property, let's say we get an offer. So I'll call it offer one and I'll hit create offer. And it's gonna ask me for a couple details about the offer. You will notice that these are the same details that we currently ask you for on the green sheet. So what's the offer date? Let's say the offer date was today and the close date was going to be the end of May. So let's say May 29th and I hit parties. What's the name of the buyer, right? Wally's gonna buy your house, Frank. Lord help him. Lord help him. The whole thing's gonna fall apart. All right, so Wally is the buyer. And then we'll move down here to associate's name and let's say uh, Tanya is gonna be your agent, right? So Tanya's representing you, Wally. We put in the agent name, come down here, I click on terms. And then on here, <clears throat> Wally, how much are you offering Frank on his $550,000 house? You're muted. You're muted, Wally. Wally's gonna offer me 300. <laughs> Not with me as the agent. Yeah, I was going to say, Boo. Right. there he is. All <laughs> uh, right, Wally, how much you offering? Yeah, well, you know, I, I'll, gi I'll give him full, full prize because Frank is a nice guy. All right, so, so Tanya said, Wally, if you want a chance in this seller's market, you're offering full price. That's what really happened. All right, so 550. Um, let's say Wally's paying cash, right? Wally's been saving up his retirement. He's going to pay cash for that house. I got, I got the money. Perfect, all right? And then he's going he's gonna to put down a 10% earnest money deposit. Okay, so he's just throwing his cash around all over the place. So you're just going to put in the details about the offer. Okay, you click agent analysis here, and then you can write uh, pros, you know, full price offer, cons, um, not sure if buyer actually has the money. I'm messing with you, Wally. Right, so you put in some comments there, click on save, and you will now see that you have an offer has been created. Everybody see that? So really quickly, if I add another offer, right? So I'm gonna do an offer number two, and this is just to show you that net sheet example. So if I do offer number two, I'm gonna go back in and say the offer was made on 429. This offer, offer number two, wants to close a week sooner on the 22nd. The, uh, the buyer is uh, Juanita Leatherberry. Now I spelled your name wrong, I'm gonna keep going. 
associate. That was a Nez down there. And Nez hooked you up. Go put a Nez's name in there. Hey, Juanita, how much money do you want to offer Frank on his $550,000 house? Okay, I really want this house. I'm going to go five fifty five. dollars oh, Price is right <laughs> over here. Oh, my goodness. Price, huh? price is right over here. I like it. One dollar, Bob. Juanita, I'm your agent. You're not going that high. The cops aren't there. <laughs> yeah, the cops aren't there. <laughs> All right, so we're going to put in that information, right? And I go down here, last thing, just do agent analysis again, put in a couple pros and cons if you'd like to, and I hit save. So there's the feature I wanted to point out here was if you've created multiple offers, all right, if I select uh, at least two offers, I get a little button that shows up up here that says compare offers. And now I can click on that compare offers button, and it'll take that information, right, that we had put into the net sheet conversation here, and you'll see it gives me a net sheet. Now I didn't fill everything out. If I would have filled everything out, going through putting the offers in, this spreadsheet would be more filled out, right? But it's saying Wally's offering 550, Juanita's 555. You can see here, here's the earnest money deposit. Um, and then because I put in that, you know, that Franco's 250 or where we put in, it's also giving me a net number down there at the bottom. What's, what's termination notice? Is that inspections? Uh, yeah, so termination notice is inspections, yep. And then there's okay. also another section there. It's called like home warranty contract. That would just be if the seller's paying for the home warranty, we'll deduct that out. Um, so this is kind of the net sheet. It's not, guys, it's not a line by line, you know, super detailed. It's more of a general overview, all right? So I've heard that they're going to make this a little more editable and customizable, but right now this is what it looks like. I can either download this net sheet or I can email it to Frank. All right, so I can hit email offer over to Frank and Frank will get this net sheet. So the last thing is on this process is going to be, uh, Frank, which offer do you want to take? You want to take Wally's offer or Juanita's? I will. Um, I, Wally doesn't have the cash. I want Juanita's. Oh, man. Burn. Oh, my goodness. Man, Frank. being off, being office Frank. mates, being office mates means nothing. All right, so we're going to take yeah. Juanita's offer, okay? So once I click on accept over here, the last tab here, guys, says commissions. And it's grayed out right now. This is the new green sheet. As soon as I accept an offer, that green sheet is going to open up. Okay, you see what just happened there? So I clicked accept. Now commissions is open. I can now click on commissions. And this is basically your new green sheet. Right? So this is where you can go in and you can edit the information about the sales price, the commission rates. Right? You can edit um, the payment. So your splits, any sort of uh, anything else that you need to turn in, right? So I can hit edit information here. You'll notice that they're moving some things around now. So now you've got an add another agent button up here, right? So if I did this deal with somebody else, I could go ahead and, and uh, add another agent in. If I click on edit agent payment here, you can put in your E&O or your KW Cares or whatever that's going to be. And then down at the bottom, it also says extra payment options, add an item. So if you're given a concession or there's a deduction or some sort of bonus, right, or a referral, you can also add that in here to the green sheet. Okay, so you're going to fill out your green sheet here. One thing I do like is this is a live look at the cap. Okay, so like this is my actual cap numbers, right? Um, so it'll show you live where you are in the cap and how much further you have to go. And so once I look at this, now here's the difference. Because we asked you for some of that information up front, you don't have to type everything else out, right? You guys notice that it brought in sales price, the commission rate, the commission. Um, now you can edit those if that information were, have, were, were to have changed. But all you're doing here basically is just looking and going, okay, is that correct? Yep, all right, I'm on a, you know, I'm on a split. They take 6%. Great, I'm on a 30% split with the market center. And then over here, you're getting a total commission. How much is the office getting? Right, and then what's my check going to be for? And then once I think all these numbers look good, I can then go and hit submit. All right, and that's how that's how the MCA will receive that commission request. Okay, makes sense. So you just got to play with this a little bit. I guess the best thing here is go create an opportunity, right? Go put in some documents, send the documents to your spouse, go to their computer and open them up and see what they look like, right? Yeah, Upload to compliance, and then you can send from there. Yeah, you can definitely show up. All right. All right, any final questions there, guys? Kind of in this just general overview? Okay. All right, so just remember this document, right, on the Facebook page, the DocuSign 101 document. It's in the file section. 
It's got all of what we kind of just talked about and some nice little um, step-by-step -step instructions. And if you go to my Facebook page and you type in DocuSign, you're going to find a couple different trainings now that have been uploaded that are kind of repeats of this class. Jay Cermak from down in Florida, he did a great one. Um, and so you're going to find those different videos on here and you can watch those videos. Here's the one right here. So type in DocuSign, scroll down a little bit, and it says recording Jay Cermak's Learn DocuSign. And he digs a little bit deeper into that DocuSign side that we looked at today. Uh, one question. So should we start using DocuSign if we're between deals now? The problem is, and this is the case for the Alliance Group, because I think we have some Manassas agents on here that I'm, I'm helping out the Manassas office. The, the Alliance Group is still using .loop for compliance. Yeah. So you should not, in my opinion, I wouldn't see any sort of reason to go use DocuSign because you have to upload them to .loop to get compliance done. Right? Okay. Now, I still do think it's just best to, you know, spend 10 minutes, sorry if my dog's scratching, but spend 10 minutes to, uh, you know, go in there and just repeat the process so it's a lot bit easier when we do go to the system. And I will tell you guys, I don't know what the date is yet on when we'll be back in the offices, but as soon as we get back in the offices, you know, it'll probably be a 30-day ticker to when we actually go to this system. Tipper has just said that we're not going there until we are back in the market centers. Linda, do you have a question? I saw you popped on there. Um, no, I was just going to actually just write a comment, but yeah, Perfect. everything's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, guys. Well, remember my link on there for one-on-ones if you need some extra help um, and go check out those DocuSign videos. And, and uh, we'll Hey, keep... Kyle, real quick. Yes, sir. Why don't we use the address on the um, DocuSign rather than the, the client's name? Why do you use the address? What do you mean? You know, like in dot loop, first thing I do is change it to the address. The, the loop name, you mean? The loop name, yes. Yeah, so it doesn't really matter. It did matter before because it used to just put someone's last name. So it'd be like, you know, Vincent Listing, and that would get confusing. Now we can actually, on the compliance side, we can see the address associated with it. So you don't need to change the address because we can actually find it okay. by searching it. So you can change your loop name to whatever you want it to be. Um, if that's the way you want to do it, to kind of keep it organized on your side. But we can filter and find an address or find a name in the opportunity. Okay. All right, guys. Well, it's two o three. I've got another call. I got to jump on. So I hope everyone has a great day. And if you need anything, let me know. Talk Thank to you. you. Bye. All right. See ya. Thank you.